This is TK Coleman, and you're tuning in to another episode of TK's Two Cents. Today, we're going to talk about guilt and creativity stereotypes. Let's dive right in with the first tweet. Here we go. Guilt is useful when it's your own conscience telling you to stop doing things that are unhealthy or violent. Guilt is self-destructive when you let other people manipulate you into apologizing for your preferences, priorities, and principles. Let's talk about guilt. Guilt is a word that gets a bad rap for a good reason. Guilt is a tool of manipulation for many people who want to prey on their ability to make you feel bad about who you are, what you believe, and what you do. And so it is very important when we think about a concept like guilt that we do so in a nuanced and balanced way, that we do not demonize it as if it's entirely useless, and that we do not divinize it as if it is a concept that could not be misapplied. All right, what is the purpose of guilt? Guilt is kind of like your moral pain detector. Think about your body. Your body has pain detectors. When you, for instance, touch something that is too hot, you feel pain. And even though the pain itself is unpleasant, your capacity to feel that pain is a good thing. It is essential for your health, your safety, your survival. That pain is something that signals to you, you've gotta move your hand back. Get away from that fire, get away from that hot stove. Change what it is you are doing or you are going to suffer. That's a good thing to have. That's what guilt is like. It's like a moral pain detector. There are some things we can do in life that are unhealthy or that violate the rights of others. There are things we do in life that are based on comfort and convenience, but they are not based on an accurate understanding and awareness of what is consistent with our own goals, what is consistent with our value system, and so on. And since it is easy for us to kind of get caught in the habit of just doing things that are based on convenience and comfort or short-sightedness, we need that moral pain detector to say, hey, what you're doing is wrong. And, and, and you experience that as feeling bad about what you did. That was wrong. I should not have done that. Now, the purpose for that guilt isn't so you can sit around and wallow in it. The purpose for that guilt isn't so that you can sit around and feel sorry for yourself. Because if you've truly done something wrong, you aren't helping the situation at all by just feeling sorry for yourself. If you've truly done something wrong or you're living in a way that is unhealthy or that is violent, then you need to make changes and that guilt is there to motivate you to change. That wasn't right, therefore I need to alter my behavior. That wasn't right, therefore I need to go make it right and then move on learning from this situation. That is the purpose of guilt, that is a constructive use of guilt and if you are using guilt that way, it is a means, not an end and it is a valuable tool. But there's another use of guilt and that use of guilt is when other people say, hey, I don't feel good about what you just said. I don't like what you believe. I don't enjoy the fact that you're doing what you want to do rather than what I want you to do. And then such people will try to shame you. They will try to call you names. They will try to cancel you. They will try to make you feel bad about yourself because if they can get you to feel bad about yourself, if they can get you to apologize for who you are and what you believe in, then they can be the ones to control you by getting you to use your gifts, your talents, your energy, your resources, your influence for their purposes rather than your own. And here's what I want to say about that. If anyone ever tries to make you feel guilty about anything you say, think, or do, demand evidence for why you should feel guilty about what you said, what you thought, and what you did beyond the mere fact that it made them feel bad beyond the mere fact that they don't like it. Make it clear to them that your sense of morality is not grounded in the fleeting, fluctuating emotional experiences of others, but that your sense of morality is grounded in conviction. It's grounded in things that can be demonstrated to be true. If your sense of right and wrong, if your moral compass is not grounded in conviction, it will be controlled and tossed to and fro 
by the ever-changing sentiments of a society that hardly knows how it feels and that usually gets its instructions on how it's going to feel from the latest fad or the latest trend on social media. You do not want to become such an unstable, psychologically volatile person as the kind of person you will be if you allow other people to manipulate you with guilt. What are your preferences? What are your priorities? What are your principles? Don't apologize for them. And if anyone demands that you do apologize for them, demand evidence for their demand for an apology. Let's go to tweet number two. There is no such thing as a non-creative person. There are simply people who have not yet learned how to create in their own unique way. One of the things that frustrates me the most about this word creativity is that we equate it with things like eccentricity. And we assume that to be creative is the same thing as to be weird, to be different, to be eccentric, to stand out in a way that makes other people say, oh, whoa, what's up with that guy? We assume that creativity is about the way you dress or creativity is about the way you wear your hair or creativity is about being in the fine arts. And so what has happened is you have so many people out there who work in business, they work in engineering, they work in education, or they don't dress in a way that's interesting to people around them, or they're not funny, or they're not musically talented, or they're not into theater, and they don't think of themselves as creative, and the contribution that they can make to other people around them, their families, their employees, their employers, they fail to make those contributions because they dismiss themselves as being uncreative. Such people are the victim of creativity stereotypes. One of the worst things you can do in life is to stereotype creativity as someone that is in the fine arts or someone that looks like X or dresses like Y because that leaves you out of the equation and causes you to lose confidence in something that is not only essential to your, to your humanity, but something that is the key to unlock the possibilities and the potential in your life. Everyone is creative. To be creative is to be human, and to be human is to be creative. You know, the interesting thing about the way we think about creativity is that there are lots of people in this world with style and, and charisma and eccentricity, but they don't actually do anything. They never produce any effects. They never alter the world around them. They don't change the status quo. They don't question things. They don't challenge things. They don't disrupt things. They don't innovate things. But hey, they got style. The root of the word creativity is to create and to create means to cause something, to bring something forth, to make something exist, to alter, to modify, to rearrange, to actualize the possible. There is no creativity without the actual process of creating. So you can look and sound as cool as you want, but if you're not actually getting anything done, if you're not actually producing effects, then that's not what creativity is about. If you are someone who knows how to make things happen, you are creative. Don't let anybody tell you otherwise. It's not about the person who's wearing a business suit versus the person that's wearing the leather jacket. It's about the person who is actually taking their ideas and translating those ideas into action versus the person who simply lets their ideas swim around in their imagination. You have the right to be creative. You have the responsibility to be creative. It's who you are. Please, please, please give yourself permission to bring it forth. That's how you live a life that is free of unnecessary guilt. And that's how you transcend creativity stereotypes. Thank you for listening. It's always a pleasure to show up here and to engage with you all. If you have any questions or comments, any additional thoughts you'd like me or the audience to consider, don't hesitate to leave it in the comment section. Please hit the like button please hit the subscribe button. If you're watching this on YouTube, subscribe to follow us for more updates and more shows. If you're listening on the podcast, please be sure to subscribe and to rate and to comment. Your support is very helpful. And last but not least, if you have a family member, a friend, or even an enemy that might benefit from hearing TK's two cents, don't hesitate to share with them. All right, everybody, thanks for tuning in. Live guilt-free and live creatively. Peace.